I'm Sandra Caeiro and I'm going to teach you the topic about practices within education for sustainable development. So, uh, in, in this video, um, I want to show you the main aims of this topic, which is to explore the main approaches, techniques and practices within education for sustainable development to be applied in any context of an organization at non-formal, informal or formal process of at, in, at any level of education. Most of these practices have been applied at schools, primary or secondary schools, and also at higher education institutions. So the main literature and research available on the field is applied to these institutions, but the techniques and practices can be applied to any organization. The slides and the aims of this presentation is to guide you or study uh, and concepts organization and to look for further readings. So this is just a guide for your study. Um, basically, there are seven types of practices within education for sustainable development that I show in, uh, uh, in this slide. And those practices could be applied alone or in integrated in a holistic uh, way. So basically, this these type of practices are, for example, to be applied uh, education for sustainable development at the facilities of the campus operations. And I will talk a little bit about it. Another type is about education and curricula at formal or non-formal levels uh, of education. And this is the main, where the main publications and research uh, and even practices when we are talking about education for sustainable development. A third type is at the organization and change management level. Another one is in the type of assessment and, and reporting and communication about how an organization is performing their sustainability. A fifth level or fifth type is about external community and I will explain uh, later what that means. And the last, I mean it's not the last, but it's the seventh type is uh, within research. Uh, then ca they can be applied all together according to a whole institution approach or can be applied just separately. Uh, another important thing when you're talking about those practices is usually they are related in according to a multi-stakeholder interaction and they should be applied according to a lifelong process. Uh, also, um, usually we, we think that these uh, type of practices are only applied in within the formal education process, but that, that's not true. We can apply it in the formal education, on the technical training, but also on the non-formal learning, and we mean by non-formal learning for community groups, civil society organizations, non-governmental organizations, media or private sector. So, talking now about uh, what are the practices when you are talking about implementation in the facilities or in the campus operation. There are the more usual th uh, things that we heard in this type of practices are related with uh, reducing the environmental impact in the facilities of the organization, like for example, just simply by adding waste bins for recycling practices or water and waste man and wastewater management uh, or energy efficiency measures. But this is more related at the environmental component of the sustainability. But there are other measures important also, namely namely related to equity and diversity, uh, access and facilities to the disabled people, uh, green procurement or local producer produced food, just an, as some examples. And we have some supporting tools that help organizations to apply th this kind of uh, um, measures or, or changes for the organization to improve their performance, the environmental performance. And those tools are like, for example, environment, environmental management tools, life cycle analysis, sustainability building labels, and the most uh, usually used at uh, uh, primary and secondary schools that are the green uh, uh, schools flag or the eco schools flag. And for this, uh, I advise you to read the Lozano et al. Uh, paper. Um, the second type of practices within education for sustainable development are related with the incorporation of education in curricula. 
And for this incorporation, we could talk in different types of levels. We could see for the more simple one to the more holistic one, what that's supposed to mean. I, we can just start to uh, cover some environmental issues and materials in already existing course. And this is usually what is used in primary and uh, secondary schools, and what is called uh, by UNESCO the multiple perspective approach. Uh, this is more or less the more simple way we could, we could say. Another level is to add a model or chapter in a traditional course. And it could be a traditional course like, for example, English or mathematics and, and try to add on this course issues related with sustainability. Another level is to develop a specific sustainable development course. And usually is, this is done at the professional training or even at higher education institutions. And a fourth level is a renewal uh, of a curricula. We mean by that, by developing a program, for example, uh, engineering for sustainable development or environmental engineering program. And this is could be applied at undergraduate level or postgraduate level at uh, uh, higher education institutions. So to allow to incorporate and to have these sustainability issues at organization, of course we need to have teacher training, we have specific or more appropriate learning methods and tools, and also we have the competences that the learner should uh, acquire. Um, just talking briefly about the multi-perspective approach, which is a, an approach developed by, by UNESCO, and we, you have further readings within uh, these, uh, these two documents of UNESCO, um, is usually used uh, within primary and secondary schools, and there is a lot of materials that teachers can use to incorporate this multi-perspective approach. And what we mean by this? We mean, like for example, to uh, add to the students or to teach to the students historical perspective of changes, or about human rights, or about the values, the cultures and of, of the countries, because sustainability we should see, be seen as a holistic way is not only talking about the effects of climate change and how the sea rise have been increasing, but also talking about diversity, uh, about gender equ equity, and these also important social issues. And it could be easily incorporated within the formal uh, um, classes. So schools should have like a source of innovation in teaching and learning, then simple just uh, adding another subject to the curriculum. You can visit UNESCO sites which have a lot of information available on these issues. Um, another uh, important issue when we are talking about this type of incorporating of education and curricula, um, uh, we should reorient uh, and train the teachers. I mean, we need to train the teachers for them to teach these issues in a um, interdisciplinary way or transdisciplinary within formal learning, transformative learning and, and leadership approaches. So we need also to train the teachers for them to be able to teach this kind of, of issues. Also, it is important to use uh, holistic and collaborative learning methods, approaches and, to and tools, and there are several already available, like problem-based learning, uh, case studies, using also tools like life cycle assessments, games, so a lot of uh, basically collaborative uh, tools that uh, allow students and teachers to discuss this kind of, of, of issues. And of course, there is the importance of fulfillment uh, on the students of learning outcomes and competences within sustainable development, which sometimes is not very, uh, very easy. And there is a lot of literature on this. So for the issues, there is these readings that you should uh, uh, read these papers. Another thing when, um, when we talk about incorporating education and, and curricula, Usually there are some uh, categories or, or levels that we should accomplish when you, we want to have uh, sustainable development issues in, in a course or in a program. 
And, and that means in a way that we need to teach the principles underlying in, in within sustainability, but at the same time, students have to develop skills. They have to be prepared for action and for uh, attitudes and, and attitudes changes. And, and because uh, sustainability is mostly related not only with this holistic approach, but with action to, for the students or the, 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 the participants to be after the training to allow them to, to act, to pass the, the message to the others and to change, of course, their, their attitudes and, and behaviors. Uh, finally, within it, this incorporating education and curricula, key competences are well defined within education for sustainable, sustainable development. And I mean well defined, but also under uh, different research uh, fields. But most of them are related with uh, inter interdisciplinary work, with capacity of, of empathy, compassion, and solidarity. So this is not only related with knowledge acquisition. It's related also with self-motivation and motivating others, because if you not are feeling sustainability, it's very difficult for you to pass the word to others. So it should be according to holistic approach uh, and achieving transformation, because that's what we need, is to achieve transformation and changing behaviors. Now about organizational uh, change management, because usually when we talk about practices within education for sustainable development, we are mainly focused on this incorporating of training and education and new programs that youngers should, should uh, acquire. But that it should not only be this one. We should work within the field of um, uh, put the organization to change their management. And what, you are, what, what kind of changes are we talking? We're talking about changing through their values, through their visions, philosophies, policies, employee empowerment, and change management practices. And for that, there are some tools and things that can help organizations to do this change management. For example, they, they could sign different kinds of declarations that obligate them for some commitments within sustainable development. Also about employees' awareness and, and, and empowerment. Also change management practices, like within the usual hierarchical flow for top-down or bottom-up. And of course, also within internal change and innovation, a particular at decision-making levels, and change in, in mental models. Some of those things are related with non-material uh, uh, values. And for that, there are also readings of the author Rodrigo Lozano of those papers that I show in here. Now, the fourth type of practices within education uh, uh, for sustainable uh, uh, development are related with assessment and reporting. And what we mean by this is tools that allow us to show what are the commitment and the, the sustainability performance of an organization, what are, what are their performance to achieve sustainable development. Um, and the most common tool is uh, using sustainability reporting. So, but what is sustainability reporting? Is a practices uh, of measuring, disclosing, and being accountable to internal or external stakeholders for organizational performance towards the goal of sustainable development. And usually this is done through the use of performance indicators. And for that you can also have these readings. And I just want to say that some of the readings are the man mandatory, the ones that I really advise you to read and the others that are complementary, that could be according to uh, your uh, different interests. Um, within also this assessment and, and reporting, there is a larger number of tools to assess and rank sustainability. 
at organization levels. Most of them uh, are very well known based on norms of the international standard organizations, namely, for example, for about or related with social responsibility, with quality assurance, environmental management systems, environmental performance evaluation, environmental communication, and the most well known uh, used for sustainability reporting, which is the Global Reporting Initiative uh, guidelines. But there are also other tools that have been specifically developed for higher education institutions to assess their sustainability and even to rank them. And some of those tools are related with all the practices within the higher education institutions from the facilities to the change organization management, but also some of them related specific with the curricula. If, if to see if a, a certain curricula uh, is really within education for sustainable development goals and, and uh, acquisition. And these are some examples of uh, uh, those tools specifically developed for uh, our education institutions. And for that, there is a lot of readings. Some, this one is mandatory, but the others this complementary reading if you want to know specific some of those, of those tools. For primary and secondary schools, the most well-known use is the Echo School flag, which is a way of a school can say that she is committed with sustainability. Or no, I should say that this tool is mainly focused on the environmental component and not so much in the social component. So the fifth uh, type of practices within education for sustainable development is related with external community and outreach. And how we mean by this? We mean by going out of the organization, relate them with the stakeholders, with the community. So, and there are different ways where we can, can uh, practice this external community. For example, at FI education institutions or for schools, it could be through the use of exchange of sustainable development programs of joint degrees. So there is a link, there is a network between organizations. But this network cannot only be with uh, um, education institutions. It could be with non-governmental -or organizations, sorry. Um, could be with the government, could be with different type of organizations, even with the community. Um, so is mainly based with uh, sustainable development uh, partnerships. It can also do within joint research of different uh, fields of, of knowledge. Uh, it could be through sustainable development events open to the community and to according to participatory and communication and engagement uh, initiatives with all the stakeholders. And for that, you also have some mandatory and complementing um, readings. So finally, uh, not, I mean not finally, because as I said, most of or all these uh, uh, type of practices can be used uh, all together or separately. Um, it is the research. Research means the, the, the field where uh, research can be developed to improve these practices within education for sustainable development. And the main fields that be, we have been working on is uh, uh, within pedagogy and learning, most related with transformative learning, with innovative learning, ways how can we achieve or put the students or the participants to achieve the competences within education for sustainable development because it's not easy to uh, teach within holistic, transformative and interdisciplinary learning. Uh, so most of those research are also related with holistic and system thinking with stakeholders engagement and participation. There's been a large work within this but also some that is still needed. Action research, we can do research at the same time that we are applying these new techniques at schools, at organizations, whatever. New knowledges and technologies, technologies can also be very useful to improve these, these practices. And also within knowledge transfer and collaboration strategies between the academia and the practitioners. Sometimes the acad academia are are not faced with, with the practitioners, with other government organizations, with private organizations, and they should work uh, together. 
So thanks for listening. You have now to do the readings according to what I said during the presentation. And any doubts you have, anything you'd like to discuss, you know that I'm available on the forum to discuss with you. Thank you.